Mr. Betty, I am here joined by Senator Corker, who's been an active player in this budget battle. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Uh, was your mind changed at all by what you heard last night, either from the president or by Speaker Boehner? Uh, not really. I, you know, it was interesting. I had a uh, dinner last night at my home and, uh, you know, had senators from both sides of the aisle who... Wait, that's it. not allowed, is it? Yeah, well, we actually did. That was kind of fun. And we watched uh, both speeches and, and I, don't, I don't think it was an indication of what's actually happening. I think, I think uh, I'm actually beginning to be hopeful. I think that we're now beginning to focus on results, whereas you know, maybe a week or two ago, we were trying to focus on a political way out of this, okay, to, to, you know, so that nobody was taking blame. Now we're starting to focus on results. And I think people around the country realize something's going to happen on this debt ceiling, okay? It might be ugly to watch. And at some point, I hope the public actually tires of all these tantrums and things that are occurring right now. But I think people are beginning to focus on the fact that we've got to have something that actually changes the trajectory. And so they're beginning to look beyond just this debt ceiling increase, but what is it that we're actually going to do as a country? So I'm starting to think that this debate is becoming healthy now uh, internally. But, okay, The public comments, uh, I don't think, are worthy of that. But, but, but Senator, we have a week to go until this gets done. You've got two rival plans on a collision course right now. You've got a president calling for, for a grand bargain that that even his own uh, colleagues say is impossible right now. How? What's the end game? You know, uh, uh, first of all, I mean, we've got more than a week. Okay, I hate to keep saying that, but the, the, the August second is a political deadline. Okay, there's no Treasury Secretary known to man that can project three months out in advance when the date is. So, you know, I don't want to extend this on out any further, but we've got time to figure this out and do the right thing. And I think the markets, uh, all these guys that uh, are masters of the universe have people who are keeping up with the cash flows and they realize that Hey, look, the Social Security letters would have already gone out if August 2nd were the deadline. So I, I don't want to hyper-focus on that. I think we need to come up with the results soon. But what I would say to you, Peter, is that internally uh, people are actually beginning to focus, in my opinion, on the right thing, and that is what are we going to do to change the trajectory? Not how do we get out of this politically, not who do we cast blame to, but how do we solve this problem? I think that's healthy. S&P suggested without a long-term deficit reduction, about $4 trillion over 10 years, that they be prepared to downgrade the United States. It doesn't look like either of these plans are going to hit that target. Uh, what's the prospect for a downgrade in the short term? Could that yeah. have the effect that, that you say isn't yeah. likely even with August 2nd? So, well, again, at least I think what they're saying is healthy. In other words, everybody's not hyper-focused on just this debt ceiling issue now. They're focused on what Standard & Poor's, uh, to, to what degree they have credibility anymore, is saying about the, the longer term issue. That's why I think this is becoming now healthy. We're actually focused on making sure that we don't just pass the debt ceiling uh, dilemma, but that we actually do something to change the trajectory. That is very, very healthy in this body. Do you think a downgrade right now by S&P would be unjustified? Uh, I think I think today, yes. I think if we were to make it past this debt ceiling vote and not do anything that's substantial, uh, I think it would not be unwarranted then. And that's why I've continued to, to focus on, hey, what is the end result here? Let's don't just kick the can down the road. Let's do something that's great for our country. You know, there's been a lot of criticism about focusing on this debt ceiling issue, and a lot of people saying, well, we've you know, raised the debt ceiling a scree in time since the creation of this country. Well, yes, but I don't think, I don't think without this debt ceiling issue coming up, we'd be focused on those things that are good for our country. People say, I hear the masters in the universe, Peter, P, uh, Peter some of them on your program saying, well, you know, I, they just should handle this through budgeting. Well, we've been over 800 days without a budget, and so the country finally, the president, Everybody is finally focused on the right thing. I think that's healthy. We'll get it done. The president, uh, again, repeated uh, about a shared sacrifice, about a balanced approach. Yeah. You've had polls suggest that there are Americans out there who agree revenue should be on the table. At the end of the day, neither of these plans have revenue on the table. When we come back to that larger solution, is Bob Corker ready to put revenue on the table? Well, you know, there's all kinds of revenue, Peter, and I think that that's where people get, uh, you know, let's look at a package. Let's see what we're talking about. I mean, we talk about revenue through dynamic growth because we've we've done tax reform and we've freed this economy up to flourish. I mean, that's one kind of revenue that I don't think anybody would object to. 
Uh, there's other kinds of revenues where you actually jack people's rates up and you create disincentive for new jobs and, and business creation. So I don't think, you know, I, I don't think they can get enough Democrats even to support that. So I, I think this whole thing has been a, a semantics a boondoggle, if you want to say. Let's look at a package. Let's sit down and assess what it does and let's quit talking past each other. I actually don't understand why last night even occurred, okay? Why we had these sort of dueling, uh, you know, I, I just don't understand what the purpose of that was when we actually are beginning to focus on the right thing here internally. Really quick, does Harry Reid have 60 votes, yes or no? Oh, I, I, no, I doubt it. I think, you know, look, uh, I, th I think the best thing that could happen, Peter, is let's don't bring a package to the Senate floor until we have it. Let's don't further push people apart. All right. Senator okay. Bob Corker, the Republican of Tennessee.